Ashley and Jay. We're back here with Ashley confronting Jay about being on Tinder and Jay. <laughs> The woman, they approached me. They came to me like I wasn't going after the woman. I don't know what that accent was. <laughs> yeah, um, of course they approached you because you made a Tinder profile. Like the women would not be coming after you if you didn't make a Tinder profile, okay? And you swiped on them, Jay. That's how they knew that they could approach you. <laughs> like he's 20. He's 20! 20 year old men are so sloppy. Like you can't even keep up with the game because you don't know how to do it yet. Get out of here. And then he like tries to force these tears. First of all, he's doing his damn just like squeezing and nothing is coming out. Only a little wetness right here. Nothing else happened. And then he goes from being remorseful to like being this jerk. If she wants me out, she got to call the police. Hello, 911, who the hell are you? After Ashley and Jay have their moment, Ashley goes to meet with Brandy. Brandy hops out the car with this like bleach blonde hair. And she's like in this lingerie romper that looked like it was purchased from Alibaba. I was <laughs> When she got out that car, y'all, I hollered. I actually love her. I love Brandy because Brandy is happy in the skin that she is in. She wears what she wants. Like she literally dresses to make herself happy. She don't care what nobody else has to say. Homegirl's at a playground in lingerie. Like it's a, it's a little white child just on the swing, having a good old time. And Brandy is in a lingerie romper, sitting, you know, on the um, what are they called? They're sitting on the bleachers, gossiping with her friend. <laughs> I love her. And also, let's talk about Brandy's hair because that also just solidifies that I think that this show, or not this show, but the storyline is just not right. Like something is up. I feel like they are fake. I feel like they are putting it on because Brandy's hair, completely different, right? But if you remember, when Ashley took Brandy and her other bridesmaid to go shopping for a wedding dress, Brandy had that like mop top whatever that was it was like ashy up here then it was dark brown back hair right then after ashley catches jay cheating on tinder she goes and talks to brandy about it so that had to be after they got married after they looked at bridesmaids dresses after they told them that they are eloping all of that right so brandy's hair is visibly different but on 90 Day Fiance Live, Brandy had the same hair that she had when she went shopping for bridesmaids dresses. Now, I know sometimes people go back to the same hairstyle, but that hairstyle is very distinct, very sloppy, and you can't do that sloppiness twice. So I'm like, oh, we're doing reshoots here to clean up the storyline. Like, nah, y'all gotta be quicker than that. Y'all gotta be quicker than that. I caught that. That is some reshoot storyline mess because this story is not adding up and y'all trying to clean it up so we don't catch the bull you're pulling. Mm -mm. Ashley and Jay, y'all getting sloppy. Even Jay's apology to Ashley was so heavily produced. I didn't believe none of it. Not a one. And I normally am for this couple, right? But I just can't. And this is why I stopped following all of the couples on Instagram because I just feel like they spoiled the show for me. Do any of you guys who follow them feel that way? I just, I wanted to follow them so that I could keep track with everything that was going on, but I unfollowed everybody because I just felt like they spoiled everything. And I'm like, aren't y'all under contract? Why are y'all saying all this stuff? Ashley is showing pictures from one wedding. Then she's cleaning up stories about her other wedding and her wedding in Jamaica wasn't legal. But y'all had outfits. Y'all had a full on banquet. Like th their wedding, they had the whole shebang. Like it was a huge bridal party. So you mean to tell me that wasn't legal? Okay, girl. They just got really, really sloppy. Colt and Larissa was very sloppy. Like Larissa, I knew that um, her and Colt was going through like issues with the police because she was putting it on Instagram saying she was locked in her door. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? But I know that scene is coming up later in the um in the season, but I just didn't want to find out about it now. So I just stopped following them because it was just spoilers all over the place. TLC, get control of your cast. I feel like I need to know who's older in uh Kalani and Kilani's and their sisterhood ship. Like something is going on because Kalani 
is at her wedding, on her, on her wedding day, feeling remorseful about being pregnant, checking in with her sister to make sure she's okay with it. And she's okay on her wedding day. And I'm like, why are you giving her so much power over you? Because Kalani aids that behavior that Kilani gives out. Like she allows her to do that. And I feel like she coaches her in that sometimes. So I want to know, is, is Kalani younger than Kilani? Or is Kilani the big, like they're... Their, their relationship is so odd. Like, it's very off to me. Like, I know they love each other, and I know they have each other's back, but it's just, it's weird. It's real, real weird. Like, we're missing something with these two. So if anybody knows how old Kehlani is, or Kehlani, whatever, the slim one, can we be real? Let me know in the comment section below, because I thought in the beginning she was her little sister, but she gives me older sister vibes with Kehlani. So, so if you got the tea, because I know you do, let a sister know. So then we get to this wedding that I was expecting to hate on, but it was really beautiful. When I swallow started crying and he really loves her. I just hope, like my prayer is that she watches this back, Kalani, watches this show back and realizes that she really mistreated him and that she loves and honor and respects him the way he does her. Cause I really feel like he treats her like a woman should be treated by, by her husband, but she doesn't give him that back. And I hope she's learned and grown and starts to appreciate what she has because baby, let me tell you something. There is no low for clout chasing hoe. I'm gonna tell you that right now. These women will do anything to get famous, even ones with money. So don't act like he should be, you know, thankful to be with an American girl like you because baby, them hoes is in his DMs. Let me tell you, if they in Colts DMs, please believe they in our swellers, okay? So don't, don't get too high up on your horse when you think you got him in the bag. Mm -mm. Even John from John and Kate plus eight had yeah. loads of holes. I couldn't believe he was cheating with some of the women he was cheating with. So that's what I'm saying, Kalani. Don't get too big on high on your horse or big on your britches. Whatever, y'all know what I'm saying. Stay woke, sis. Stay woke. Ugh, and then we get to the father. If he does anything wrong, I'll straighten it out real quick. Like what? I get that you're the protective father. It's getting old. Like be happy. Just be happy. Obviously, this dude really loves your daughter. And dad, I'm telling you, you got a difficult kid. You better be lucky somebody want to marry her. And you know, before I move on, Kilani, when she said it, when it crashes and burns, if it crashes and burns, I'll be there. <laughs> and that evil little giggle. Their relationship is weird. They're, my sisters would never do that. How are you even getting any kind of joy in their relationship crashing and burning? And why would you even say that? This family, mm -mm. y'all all need therapy. Y'all need to go on a young <laughs> I will watch that. Now that, oh, she would get that father all the way together. Oh, Eric and Lita, I'm so over this couple. Please go away. Are they going to be on Happily Ever After? TLC, please don't do that to us. We don't, we don't deserve that. We've been too good to you. The viewers have been good to you guys on this show. Don't give us Eric and Lito on Happily Ever After, please. You already given us Colt and Larissa. Give us a break. This is another thing I didn't get. I understand it's a wedding, right? But Eric forgot his pants. He's making a big deal about it. And I'm like, dude, this is not the royal wedding. We all know this is a struggle wedding. Just wear the pants that you have on. Like, you're about to marry a Harvard woman, a banshee, okay? Just wear your little Walmart trousers that you got on and be happy. I don't understand why it was such a big deal. They had four people there, okay? Two of them were almost dead. Like, it wasn't, I don't think it, I think they made it a bigger deal than what it was. And I actually felt bad for Lita. This is the second time I felt bad for her this whole season. I felt bad for her because she's makeup ready, ready to put on her dress. He comes rushing in and he forgot her his pants. So she has to leave and go help him get pants. And I'm like, I don't want a man that is that dependent upon me. Like, you can't get your own damn pants? Like, why would you even let the bride know? Go run and get some pants and tell the wedding planner. Don't even got a wedding planner. Well, tell one of the producers that you forgot some pants. Go send a PA. Like, what is going on? Like, it just didn't make sense. This whole pants fiasco, I felt like they were pulling at strings to try to make their storyline just give us a little bit of drama right up until the end. And it was just unnecessary. I think my daughters think that I'm choosing Lita over them. And I am. Father 
of the year. Not. So Lita and Eric made it official. They didn't got married. And you know the one thing that Lita was excited about? Ha <laughs> ha! Coming to America. Be finally like being a citizen and being able to apply for the uh green card. Is that it? I don't know this process, but she was happy that now she's in America. They can't kick her out. She was so happy about that. Nothing about her husband, nothing about getting married to the man of her dreams, none of that. All about America. Like literally revealing her scam to Eric and he did nothing. Like Eric, you're getting scammed. But it's Eric. Like you sold your children out, dog. I don't. I don't care what happens to you. Okay. Let's get into Colt and Larissa. You know what? Colt is a looker. He can be. He can be. You know, with some weight training, um, bulk up some muscle. You know what I mean? Uh, get some social skills because he's awkward. It is what it is. We know that. That's good TV. A little chin implant, some veneers. He could, you know, he could do a little something. He could do a little, yeah, some contact, some LASIK. I can see him being a looker. I really, really could. Because even when he was in the mirror fixing his hair, I was like, okay, cool. You, you know you're working with a little something. Gotta get rid of the titties. Because it shows in every shirt. It just, and that damn cranberry shirt that he had on again. What is up with this cranberry shirt? <laughs> How many does he have? Or is it the same one that he's washing and pressing every day? So this is why I have always rooted for Larissa. Although I knew she was a scammer. Colt treats her terribly. How dare you re-invite John to your wedding? It's you and Larissa's wedding and you're re-inviting John. Who called her every curse word in the book. Like how dare you re-invite him? I don't care if that's your only cousin. So what? He disrespected your wife. He should have done the right thing and get it right. Uh, made John apologize to Larissa and then asked uh, Larissa if it was okay for um, John to come to his wedding. But the way he treats her, I'm like, that's your wife, dude. Regardless of how she got here, you chose her, okay? Don't mistreat her. I don't like it. I don't like, I get it. You know, yes, some of these people are on here scamming. But just because you're the American and you got him here and you know what the game is, you treat him like crap, I still can't get behind that. And I don't feel like, in my opinion, I've seen anything from Larissa that will warrant that treatment that Colt gives her. It's not right. He doesn't treat her as his wife. I, he treats her as some property that is supposed to have sex with him all the time. But the fact that he has a high sex drive. Larissa, child, I would just get another job. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. But word on the street is that they're both going to Brazil to get some work done so they can be looking, you know, snatched on Happily Ever After. See, this is a couple that's scamming that I want to see their storyline. They are so weird and interesting that I just want to see how this is going to play out. Larissa got her dress from Goodwill. Y'all, she not with him for the money. He ain't got it. She has to solely be with him just so she can get into America. It can't be the money. He don't have it. We get to this wedding. Uh, Miss Debbie is in her best Ellen DeGeneres costume. <laughs> I'm like, Miss Debbie, did you know you were coming to a wedding? Like, ain't nobody there. I don't know why people spend so much money on like renting a hall if nobody is coming. You know what I mean? Just go to the justice of the peace. Spend money on outfits and food after and just go to the justice of the peace because it just made it look so sad that they had this huge hall and nobody was there. <laughs> the majority of the guests were children of John, okay? Who was fresh off of his ship from uh, Friendly's air conditioning, his wife and those freaking toddler and newborn baby headbands that she wears. I don't know what is going on. Maybe she's trying to sell them on Etsy. Maybe she's trying to get her little business off. But ma'am, those headbands are for toddlers and newborns. Stop it with all these hair accessories that make you look like a child. She swears she's killing in them questionable eyebrows that always looks like she is concerned. <laughs> she always look like she has seen something and she is concerned about those eyebrows and those headbands and those hair pieces girl john needs to be worried about that and not colt and larissa and you know what although i know that this couple is you know hamming it up and uh, really playing up to the cameras this was the happiest i've ever seen colt i don't feel like he was acting 
he was really happy. He kept on calling her baby and he was treating Larissa how I've always wanted him to treat her. He was like, oh, we're married, baby. Oh, baby, he was so happy. And that really warmed my heart, just seeing him being so happy to be a married man, to have been married to Larissa. Like, that was a pure moment for me. I don't feel like they were acting. And I really love that. I really, really love seeing Colt happy. I really did. <laughs> but then he ruins it by calling the cops on his new bride. Like, why? Why would you do that? See, that's the thing with the Americans. I don't like them holding that they can kick out, you know, their partner out of the country if they feel like, like what he did to Larissa was wrong. And I'm so glad that Miss Debbie did not back him up. You know, she was like, you, you got to fix it. That wasn't right. Like, don't, you know, Colt, you're a big dude. Larissa can't harm you. If y'all had an issue, let her calm down. You know how she is. Let her calm down and then y'all work it out. To call the cops on her was so cowardly and just ugly and i and i don't like that because the americans use that over their international partners to make them feel like they have like this power over them even though you're here i still can work the system and i still could have you arrested and all. like that wasn't cool cole that was not cool at all we'll get more of that story on happily ever after because they are filming up a storm thanks Colt and larissa for letting me know that's why i'm following them they give their whole storyline away where are the tlc producers Shut down your cast Instagram, Olga and Steven. So Steven is finally leaving Russia. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Poor Olga was really sad that he was leaving. And I was like, oh girl, I would be celebrating. You and Richie can live in freedom for however long it's going to take for you to get that damn visa. I mean, maybe she was putting on the tears. And as soon as she realized she was safe, was just like, yes, Richie, me and your real daddy going. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to Olga. But <laughs> girl, um... I just, yeah, I would have been celebrating if Steven left. He is, he needs help. He needs help. That boy, he's a sweetie. In the beginning of this show, I just, I felt so deeply, like, not in love with him, but I felt his story, like, my, he got my heart. But after seeing how he treated Olga, I was like, oof, Jekyll and Hyde. Hell no. And I get that she was upset that he was leaving, right? But I would also be furious because... He did not do what he said that he was going to do. So because of that, he's leaving her and Richie and now she has to fend for herself for her and her child that she did not make solely on her own. Like, that's not cool. But again, Olga just takes it. She just takes everything that that boy gives her and just rolls with the punches. And I think it's because she's had such a hard life. She doesn't wanna upset anybody or mess anything up to push anybody away. That's so sad. She deserves so much better. Hopefully when she gets older and gets, you know, more acclimated in America, she'll find her voice and um, realize that she deserves better. But who knows? I, this storyline <sighs> breaks my heart. Just kids. Just kids not knowing what the hell they doing. Mm. Jonathan and Fernanda were at the wedding. Um, I feel bad for Fernanda. I really do. I really feel sad for her. I was watching this and I was just like, wow, you're getting ready for your wedding. You have no one. Your mom's not there. It was just such a sad day for her. And then the wedding was even so sad. Like she's marrying Jonathan in his hometown. His people were there. I think that he just invited his like immediate family because everybody looked alike. Everybody in that damn audience looked like Jonathan. So it wasn't even like a big ceremony. It was in a park. It just seems, it just, it just seemed so sad and quiet. I mean, but props to Fernanda. She was like, listen, my real dress I'm wearing at, at my big wedding in Mexico. Y'all going to get this little Marshall soft hop dress for this ceremony because ain't nobody here anyway. I don't know half of you fools. The wild dress will happen in Mexico. Deal with this for now. So Jonathan's brother. Wow. Like he doesn't even believe that Jonathan will be faithful. What the hell is up with family members like? expecting for like brothers and sisters expecting for your brother or your sister's relationship to fall apart and getting a good chuckle out of it like he was like laughing at the fact that oh he's such a ladies man i can't believe he's gonna ha i can't believe he's getting married i don't know if it's gonna last <laughs> like what the Th these families are weird my family would never never but i'm like his own family his blood that was his mom's issue. She didn't believe that he was ready. She knows how her son is. So she probably doesn't want her son to, you know, go through this whole process of marrying someone 
from another country that you have to bring over here by way of visa. And if it doesn't work out, this person is still here. This person is still stuck in this situation. So maybe the mom was just like, I know my son and I don't want to put nobody in that situation with him. Nobody who can't, you know, immediately go home again, you know? So maybe that's what it is because to have the mother and the brother and even the little sister to be like, he's not ready. He's the ladies man. Like we can't believe it. And no faith. Your own family who knows you. The woman that gave you life is just like, mm-mm. So I'm like, Fernanda, I hope you're watching and protecting yourself, girl. Like, I hope, you know, you're listening. And because I like this couple. I think that they're the only ones that are like the real deal. I really do like them. I want it to work out. I'm just very concerned because Jonathan's family has no faith in him. They have no problem with Fernanda. They just have no faith in him being faithful or a good partner to Fernanda. That's concerning. When the people who know you best Believe that this is not going to work out. <sighs> Fernanda. I'm like, Jonathan, don't break her heart. She don't seem like the type of girl that um, is going to go quietly and leave you not bloody. Okay, dude, don't make the mistakes. Okay. So the family doesn't believe that Jonathan is going to be faithful to Fernanda, right? That's one thing. But then to have Jonathan's shady brother be the officiant over the... What? He's going to be the one to do the ceremony? Oh, Fernanda, it just seems doomed, girl. Doomed. Oh, uh, you know, from the family not believing in Jonathan and having a shady brother be the officiant over the wedding, listen, it don't seem like it's going to work, right? But I'm going to put hope and faith that in it that hopefully it does work because I like them together. I really do. I think that Fernanda's a little young. I've been side eyeing Jonathan since this um, show started and especially because I watched Survivor or Kelly. So I'm just like, uh, but I think he loves her. I think she loves him. I hope it works out. Fernanda, don't get pregnant right away. Don't. Don't get pregnant right away. Normally I tell a chick to get pregnant right away when she's secure in the bag. This is a situation where I feel like your heart is involved and I think that you need to, you know, give yourself a couple years, even if he pressures you, give yourself a couple years because you need to see how he's going to be as a husband. Y'all have, this is the first time y'all living together. You don't really know how he's going to be. Girl, don't get pregnant. Chill out. You got time. Anyway, that's it for me for tonight. I'm going to be checking out the next episode tomorrow morning, and then I'll be uh, catching up with you guys then. Thank you so much for sticking with me, and if you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will see you for something else on TLC concerning these damn fiancés and these visas. Oh, love you guys. Bye. Happy New Year.